He's the smartest man in Atlantis. He's got the biggest ego in the Pegasus galaxy, and he doesn't know the meaning of the word impossible. He's Dr. Rodney McKay, lead scientist of the Atlantis expedition and a member of John Shepard's reconnaissance team. Actor David Hewlett has played Rodney through five seasons of Stargate Atlantis, plus guest appearances on SG-1 and SGU. Here are our picks for Rodney McKay's five best episodes. First, a couple of honorable mentions. The first is Duet. The second season episode of Atlantis sees the headstrong military lieutenant Laura Cadman trapped inside Rodney's body. The two vie for control of his body as McKay goes on a date with Katie Brown, while Cadman would really rather be spending her time with a certain handsome Scottish doctor. Now, if this was a David Hewlett list instead of a Rodney McKay list, Duet would definitely be on it. It's an acting tour de force for David, who gets to play two very different characters in conflict with each other, all leading up to a sci-fi kiss for the ages. Also getting an honorable mention is Season 2's Trinity. It's not exactly a McKay episode per se, but it does accomplish something really important for his character. The team discovers an abandoned ancient experiment on what's left of the planet Duranda. McKay spins up Project Arcturus, which has the potential to generate unimaginable amounts of energy, many, many times the amount of a zero-point module. But like the ancients, McKay can't control the reaction, leading to a catastrophic detonation that levels three-fifths of the Durandan solar system. Trinity shows Rodney's flaws, and in stark contrast, for all his brain power, it's now made clear to him and to Shepard and to the audience that he won't always be able to pull out that technobabble solution just in the nick of time. Rodney McKay is human. Now to our top five episodes. Number five, Grace Under Pressure. Out on a test flight for a repaired puddle jumper, McKay is in a dire predicament when the ship systems fail and it crashes into the ocean. The pilot sacrifices himself to give Rodney a chance. But things look pretty hopeless as the tiny ship begins to sink deeper and deeper into the depths. He also has a head injury and begins to hallucinate someone to talk to, none other than his old flame, Samantha Carter. Amanda Tapping guest stars in an episode that, from the first frame, has fan favorite written all over it. It's so much fun to see Sam and Rodney bouncing off each other again, especially when she represents part of his own subconscious. And it's the best sort of McKay story, as he has to quickly move from one problem to the next in order to survive. Sealing the forward bulkhead, keeping himself warm, scrubbing CO2 from the air, and eventually signaling his friends so that they can rescue him. Number four, The Last Man. This is a what-if episode, a road not traveled. A solar flare unexpectedly sends John Shepard to Atlantis, an astonishing 48,000 years in the future. The ocean is gone, and the city is uninhabited, half buried in the drifting sands of a vast desert. The only thing to keep him company is a holographic projection of an aged McKay, programmed to greet Shepard and give him a mission that could redeem a bad situation. As he guides his friend step by step through a plan to get him back to his own time, Rodney tells John the story of what happened to everyone after he left. Taylor, having been abducted by Michael, was eventually found dead. Much of the team subsequently died in a losing fight against Michael and his hostile takeover of the Wraith. Rodney himself had fallen in love with Dr. Keller, only to lose her to a terminal illness. It's a powerful story full of friendship and emotion, a terrific set of performances wrapped up in a classic sci-fi premise. Every moment of the episode feels loaded with consequences. Number three, McKay and Mrs. Miller. Back in season one, the writers scripted McKay to mention a brother that he has back home. Actor David Hewlett asked if he could change that to a sister since he had a real life sister, Kate Hewlett, who is also an actor. From there, it was a hop, skip, and a jump to McKay and Mrs. Miller, which introduced Kate as Rodney's on-screen sister, Jeannie. 
herself a brilliant scientist. Jeannie has given up the academic life to raise her young daughter, Madison. But after she hits upon a genius mathematical proof, Samantha Carter and the Air Force recruit Jeannie to join her brother's research in a distant galaxy. This is such a great episode, and it's not just because we get to see Rodney with a family member who knows him so well, and who teases him so well, Meredith. The science experiment turns out to be a way to draw energy from a parallel universe. But what comes over the subspace bridge instead is Rod McKay, a handsome, confident, equally brilliant version of Rodney. So we also get to see David playing two versions of himself, made all the more fun by the fact that Rod seems to represent everything Rodney wishes he could be. Number two, Tao of Rodney. There's always a new, disused corner of the city of Atlantis to explore. In this third season episode, an ancient laboratory is discovered, where the Lanteans apparently used to research the concept of ascension. Dr. McKay is caught up in the device when it unexpectedly activates and walks away with superpowers like a supercharged brain, mind reading, and the ability to heal with a touch. Of course, there's a catch. His mortal flesh can't handle the upgrade. Rodney is going to die unless he himself can find a way to release his burden and ascend to the non-corporeal plane. Dow of Rodney is the perfect McKay episode because of the ways that Damien Kindler's script plays with the tension between who McKay is and who he could be, and between the caustic exterior he presents and the vulnerability and loyalty he hides beneath the surface. Number 1. The Shrine Series co-creator Brad Wright returns to the keyboard in Season 5, penning an episode that is poignant and gut-wrenching but still never ceases to be entertaining. Rodney contracts an illness that is familiar to the Pegasus galaxy. Known to Tela and Ronan as the second childhood, the disease appears somewhat like rapid-onset Alzheimer's. In a matter of days, Atlantis' most brilliant mind is reduced to the point where he can barely communicate, barely recognize the people around him. Making the episode even better is the way that it's shot, with video diaries documenting Rodney's slow descent over the course of a couple of weeks. And Jeannie makes an emotional return, trying to reach her brother as he slowly disappears inside his own mind. The shrine is Stargate Atlantis at its very best. David Hewlett puts in a career performance. It's our favorite McKay episode, not so much because it's all about Rodney, but because it shows how much Rodney means to his friends. From the pier scene with Shepard to an alien cave where the team plans to say a final goodbye, the episode aches with the sorrow and the hope that only true friendship can create. So what are your favorite McKay episodes? Leave a comment below with your picks and your suggestions for future videos. Visit GateWorld.net now to explore more great episodes from Stargate Atlantis, and subscribe to the channel and enable alerts to make sure you see all the latest videos from GateWorld.